Alright then. Sorry about that. This is totally annoying me. So, um, oh my god. I'm sorry, folks. Sorry about that. Anyways, welcome to game number 14. I'm here with Josh now. He's back on set. Yeah. And recently, I just got this new Skype update, so we won't try to get any crashes, hopefully. Well, it was only for Josh, not me. Yeah, because of internet problems. In Nevada, for him, he is totally having internet problems. But me, in Florida, we're doing okay. And uh, before we get started, just to let you know, starting on June 18th, which is Wednesday, by the way, I will be on Disney World in Florida. So just to let you guys know. He won't be here for the first five, four, four I'm rolling. Rolling. Oh, darling, give me some names. Four names. Names. Yes, that's right. Hey, it's Flag Day. I hope you got your favorite flag, a card or something. You can think about a gift while you're playing the game. It's By Flag way, Day? How many people do we have playing? I think it is Flag so, Day. you playing with yourself, huh? Hey, no jokes from me. Well, it's you actually Saturday. Name, lefty. He said that was Friday. Can someone get him off of that, please? Hello? Like, can you hear the intercom? Oh, yeah, you know what? I also need to know if you had plans for a 21-question game or a 7-question game. Oh, I was confused. Sorry about that. 30 seconds. Okay, he talks to you about what holiday is. If you get it, if you play that on that day, he says something right. about that holiday. 20 seconds. All right, listen up. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. Got that? Ten, Ten seconds. seconds. Good luck. Nine, rolling, people. We're eight, rolling. Get rid seven, of that desktop. Six. Five, All right, let's four, get this going. Graphics. Okay, let's make it a good one. Tap water. Taste the memory. Taste the memory. That's, that's what they always say. That's a whip off of Skittles. <laughs> there goes the logo fast. Frankly, my dear, you don't know Jack. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Okay, welcome to You Don't Know Jack Movies. Hold on to your ticket stub in case you need to leave the game at any time, okay? Playing by yourself today? Okay, just make sure you keep that overcoat on your lap. All right, let's get busy. I said chiseled tail. The sound of losers, or have you ever tongued a twister? For the enjoyment of everyone during question one, please, no unnecessary talking. Shh. All right, here's the deal. I said Chisholm That's Trail. That's what they always say. Thousand dollars for this one. You had Wait, a nickname when you I were had this on my. I, mean, I had this on my recording. Face, right? Which movie title could have been used on the set of How the West Was Won as a nickname for the film's directors? The two oh, Jakes, crap. the three what Musketeers, the five Heartbeats, or the Indians? John Ford, Henry oh, Hathaway, and George Marshall it. each directed a well, segment of How guess. the West Was Won, so I collectively they'd be known on as the Three Musketeers. Game, but it was a lucky guess. I bet the West wouldn't have been won so quickly if the Cowboys had to wear tights and fight with a pays. Happy okay, feet and cranky ears. Haiku? Or can I speak to the ape who's in charge? Cut the red wire! Seven six five four three two. That was close. Two. Where's the one? And I believe this one's called Happy Feet and Cranky Ears. Two G's if you get this one right. Let's see how you handle this one. Which royally irritating song best describes Fred Astaire's most famous dance number in Royal Wedding? Andy Gibbs shadow dancing, Lionel Richie's dancing on the ceiling, Irene Cara's break dancing, or Abba's dancing queen? I think it's four because that's my favorite song. One of my favorites. It's kind of tough. I could have said two. Here's what you should have picked. Fred Astaire oh, dances right. on the ceiling in Royal Wedding. And gosh, oh. wouldn't it be tragic if he fell off and crushed Lionel Richie? Indiana Jones in the last therapy session. If it's good or no, not Miriam. 
question so real you can almost touch it. <laughs> Filmed in spectacular 3D. Say hello to Indiana Jones and the last therapy session. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Fire up those frontal lobes, here's the question. Considering the fears he expresses in Raiders of the Lost Ark, who in mythology, Medusa has snakes for hair, and Indy's It could be Spider-Man. He is a superhero. I heard even though he, he's scared he's of her, Medusa of makes him hard as a rock. Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. Not spiders. You can take okay, the girl out of Queens. Easy boys, the dead zero meant no harm, or it's a first. Uh oh, here comes a shark. Chew on this. It's a first, and you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Just step up and take a swing at this one. Imagine you're in a maternity ward and D.W. Griffith hands you a cigar to commemorate the arrival of his groundbreaking 1915 film. What are you celebrating? The start of the greatest story ever told, his little miracle on 34th Street, the birth of the birth of a nation, or a star is born being born. Bet you wish you'd pick this. D.W. Griffith's 1915 movie, Birth of a Nation. Your party I could have said for you, for the actors and but I would be D.W. Griffith's glorification of the KKK in that movie are grosser than Afterbirth. Should have been the 20s. What type of wine goes with Gore? Sold why they call him Curly, or Illicit Horror Games. Piece of crime, all the time. Five. For your enjoyment, so why'd they call him Curly? One thousand dollars at stake on this one. Okay, what's the deal with the Three Stooges? First there was Curly, then Shemp, who was a stooge from way back, and then they got that other ball guy to beat on named Curly Joe. If instead of Curly Joe, the Three Stooges had added Curly Sue to their ranks, what scene might have taken place? Larry takes pliers to a talking pig's tail, Shemp hits a farmhand with a billiard ball, Mo tugs the ear of a cute homeless girl, or Kathleen Turner takes part in a pie fight. Well, you're toast. Let's I could have said four. Dancer looks or like. three, rapper. Curly Sue is an adorable homeless waif in that movie oh. with Jim Belushi and Kelly Lynch. I'll Come here, you porcupine. No adorable homeless waifs were injured during the recording of this question. The mild, mild west. Gross, it's turning purple. Or, I mean, the music man. Password. Yeah, tell him six sent me. Cowboy style. Let's see what we got going. The mild, mild west. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this gangster. one right. Say there, Ouch. remember how Gunsmoke and Bonanza both aired at the same time on competing networks battling for ratings? Well, before Gunsmoke and Bonanza, James Arness and Michael Landon both played film monsters. If these two characters battled it out, who would we see in the big monster fight? The Thing versus the teenage werewolf, The Thing with two heads versus Gog, Trog versus the teenage cave man or Godzilla vs. Hatsune. Before their TV careers got underway, James could try played too. the thing and Michael Landon played the yes. title character in I Was a Teenage Werewolf. That was oh, easy. shoot. That was My easy. God, it's got little Joe. No, my mistake. I have it, never it, seen it, those it movies. It is little but Joe. There are some movies, but they didn't Take okay, that thing, Google. When I say blue, you ask how hard. Or sports stars of the animal kingdom. Seven is the number that I'm suggesting. Lucky seven. seven. Okay, give it up for take that Satan's throw pillow. And we're talking 2000 for this baby. Put it in gear, cause here we go. Which of the following attack films does not exist? Attack of the Evil Office Supplies, two. Attack of the 60 Foot Centerfold, Attack of the Mushroom People, or Attack of the Killer I, Refrigerator? I think it's Good try to guess for this. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. One. Ah, darn it. Attack of oh, the you got it. Office Supplies. Oh, no, not the 
Sketchy game show prizes, the electric Kool-Aid acid test, or things to do when you're bored. I think I know what it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what is it time for? It's time for a... There is no scum. Gibberish time. Lights, camera, here's your gibberish category. Sketchy game show prizes. I'm gonna open the value of this gibberish question at 5,000 bucks. All right, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, tell me, what famous movie quote does this rhyme with? Movie quote. New tin kin, a tree, and free blonde. And don't let the punctuation throw you off. First hint, buzz from Toy Story. Start typing your answer, then hit return. Say that to infinity and beyond. Yeah, that's it. Yes! Here's the thing though, by the very definition of infinity, you can't really go beyond it, right? No wonder our kids are a bunch of illiterates. That's Jaws Quest to you. Rass! Hey you, get off my Mac Vlog. You mean Kevin Backlog? I'm not sure. Well, what do we have here? Rats! I'm giving out three grand for a right answer. Heads up, here it comes. If the producer of the popular rat films, Willard and Ben, were actually a rat himself, what would be the best title for a movie about his rodent self? The Duke, Bing, Mel, or Bogey? For the curious, here's the right answer. Believe it or not, crooner Big Crosby was the producer of both Willard and Ben. Although, if you ask his son, he'd tell you Bing was the rat. How could a dead man be walking? I prefer my Kool-Aid shaken, not stirred. First, let's kill all the lawyers. Helicopter. The category is, how could a dead man be walking? $3,000 on the table for this one. Pull out your antenna and get ready to buzz. In the film Dead Man Walking, a character says the phrase, Dead Man Walking, at the end of the movie. Given that character's job, what might he say during an average day at work? Dead boat locking, dead head rocking, head pin knocking, or Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> it's not for to be Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. <laughs> At the end of the movie, a prison guard announces Dead Man Walking as the and prisoners the being led to the death one. chamber. Being a prison guard who locks a lot of doors and cells, we might also hear him say Dead Bolt Locking. I wonder if he likes to announce his other daily activities. Prison guard pooping! That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. Every question in round two is worth twice as much, so we got some serious cash at stake here. Let's get to it. Buying a Jack Lemon. Enough with the Die Hard thing, or no wire hangers. Uh oh, sword fights. This category is known as Enough with the Die Hard thing. How does two thousand dollars sound? You know how the Wait, entire I movie Die Hard this. takes place in a single night? Well, if screenwriters had to pitch one setting movies in Die Hard oh, terms, crap. which what film would it? be pitched as being kind of like Die Hard? My dinner with Andre takes place in one restaurant at one table for okay, two I hours. Okay, I got it. There we go. Yippee ki yay! Mother of God, where is our appetizer? My kid's the brightest. How to avoid an x ray or you do know how to strangle, don't you? Indiana Jones! This keeps appearing in my game every game. Now 
showing how to avoid an X rating. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Okay, imagine this. An ambitious filmmaker has decided to film the biblical story of Adam and Eve, and the characters oh will be God. entirely nude, except for strategically placed fig leaves. Based on his early acting credits, which Oscar-winning actor should get the first oh shot at God. starring as Adam's fig leaf? Tom Hanks, Al Pacino, F. Murray Abraham, or Anthony Hopkins? Did I have this question? I'm not sure. I guess not. I'm not going for this. The correct answer is... Was it two? F. Murray Abraham, who won an Academy Award for his performance in Amadeus, used to be the fig leaf in the Fruit of the Loom commercials. But I don't know, F. Murray might be a little too high profile now for a supporting role. Animated shorts bearing nothing but a smile, or kids that play with powered tools. <laughs> Thirteen. Let's give a nice warm welcome to number. animated shorts. You give me a right answer, I give you a quick fourth. That's almost like a scary logo. Ready to wrestle. Like for if example, Disney were to the make an animated version of the thriller, killer. the taking of Pelham One Two Three. Which of the seven dwarves would be best suited to play the Martin Balsam role? Sleepy Doc, Bashful, or Sneezy? I wouldn't say one. I don't watch a lot of Disney movies, so I'm not trying it. Shoulda picked this. In the taking of Pelham 123, Martin Balsam blows his nose and the whole scheme because he sneezes once too often. And it's particularly heartwarming when Martin Balsam gets kissed by Prince Charming. Oh, A role to die for, dead and still earning a living, or a few good boys, a little men. Karate. This one's called A Roll to Die For. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Hey, are you about sick of the Royals yet? Imagine that with all her free time, Lady Di has decided to play the role of the princess in a remake of Roman Holiday. What fantasy will she get to play out in her acting? She can date without being recognized, she'll see the kids more often as their nanny, she gets to be the king, or she gets $50 to visit the powder room. Let's say free. Let's take a little off the top. Well, Let's that's take wrong. a look at the right answer. In Roman Holiday, a princess oh, played by Audrey Hepburn escapes from her royal duties to wander around Rome with Gregory Peck incognito, and no one gets a photo of her topless. The Man right, Bear Junior me. Film Festival. Kids these days for artificial smoke and mirrors. Here we have kids these days. Six thousand oh, bucks God. on the table. Better make it this good. This one's those fingers, cause here it comes. If Bernardo Bertolucci's 1979 film Luna were remade today as one of those Honey, I Did Something Wacky to the Kids movies, which of these would be the best title? Honey, I cut the kids' heads I off. Honey, I had sex it. with the kids. Honey, the kids aren't ours. Or it could honey, be four, I but I just want to make sure. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. <laughs> In the 1979 oh. film Luna, Joe oh, I didn't had know sex that. With her son, no brainer though. Who wouldn't rather have sex with Joe Clayburgh than Rick Moranis? Silly names in writing tales. Ted Turner need not apply. Or I've got the brains. You've got the looks. Right, uh -oh. guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dis Dad. or Dad. The category for this Dis or Dad question is Silly Names and Writing Tales. All right, I'm going to read off seven nicknames, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a character in Top Gun, oh, a movie's no. title, or both. Oh, no! As each name comes up, if it's a Top Gun character, press 1. Oh, no. If it's a movie title, press 2. If 
fits both, press 3. And if you want to skip one, press 4. One. Oh, oh, so you already know how to play. Oh, okay, gosh. let's put 30 seconds on the this clock then. Sucks. And I let's go. To skip a lot. Maverick, Top Gun character movie ball. Goose. Gordy. Slider. Hondo. Iceman. Last one. That's all she wrote. That We're was a, very that was mediocre. a close Let's call. check out your new total. That was way too close. All right, there's a little scrap for you. Let's move on. Funny papers and funny movies, a question you can't refuse, or for it was cool to be a slacker. The following question has been rated 17. No questions under 17 permitted. The selection is a question you can't refuse. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. All right, remember how everyone said it was a big mistake for Francis Ford Coppola to cast his daughter Sophia in The Godfather Part 3? If Francis Ford Coppola decided not to cast his daughter in the role of Mary Corleone and cast his famous nephew instead, who would be making Yogi with Andy Garcia, Kiefer Sutherland, Al Pacino, Nicolas Cage, or Leonardo DiCaprio? Morning. I should have been one. I thought this is a question I already had, but it's not. My guess would have been three. curious, here's the right answer. Nicholas oh, Cage. I got Francis it right. Wait, what? And he and Andy Garcia are just good friends. Okay, that really? was a trick question. That was question. a lucky guess for me. That was a trick question. Hey, what's it? He always knew that about her. About the lean brook. What do we got out there? It looks like... Submarine. It looks like 18, sir. I proudly present Babbling Brook, and you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. Which of these movies has nothing to do with somebody wanting to have sex with Brooke Shields? Pretty Baby, Endless Love, Alice Sweet Alice, or Blue Lagoon? While it's a stunt doubles pants Christopher Atkins gets into, he still wants to have sex with Brooke. Sorry. Ah. I that you wish you'd pick I could have, yeah, that's my same choice. As far as I can tell, nobody in Alice Sweet Alice wants to have sex with Brooke Shields. But someone does want to kill her and light her on fire, which is odd, because Brenda Starr hadn't even been made yet. Everybody hey, in the whole cell block will blow me up, or Harpo is Oprah Smelt's back room. Words. The category? Well, blow me up. I'm sending over 4,000 dead presidents if you get this one. You know, in the movie Blow Up, David Hemming's character unexpectedly discovers a hidden detail in his photo when he blows the photo up. If the photographer in Blow Up had literally blown up the details in his photos instead of enlarging them, who or what would he have exploded? A tattoo from a secret cult, a gunman in the bushes, an exotic monkey in a tree, or a part of I could have said to. Here's what you should have picked. Wait, what? Or not. The photographer in Blow Up enlarges his seemingly harmless pictures of a couple in the park to discover and that there's a gunman in the bushes for via myself. parks bushes, that is. You're only as good as your last picture. Something big you put in your mouth or tough actors and wimpy contestants. Contestants, and you pop a right answer, you got two thousand bucks. Okay, imagine you're in a fist fight with Robert Mitchum's creepy preacher character from Night of the Hunter. Because of the tattoos on Robert Mitchum's knuckles, what two words would you see careening towards your face before you fell to the ground like a sack of potatoes? Fear and guts. It could be one. And deliverance, love and hate are good. Sorry, no fear, no guts. That no was glory. my same choice too. <laughs> Let's see what a correct answer looks like. It was Bob Mitchum's freaky. character in Night of the Hunter has love and hate tattooed on his knuckles. And while you're lying on the ground, you can read the kick and face he's got tattooed on his toes. 
Who is playing a lawyer? Model filmmaking or where the action is? Uh oh, this isn't good. There goes the projector. It's time for the Chiagat Zack. Oh, so you know how this movie ends, huh? Well, then let's fade to black. Here's your category. Where the action is. Hey, that's easy. It's right here. Good luck. No. Okay, this is... There it is. There it is. Famous specific place. I find it was bus. This says running man, I'm gonna say that a game show. There's a sequel? That one was the ship. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, that's what I guess. That one's too confusing. Oh, we missed that one. Oh, oh, I think you got it. Let's see how I brought up your score. That's nice. the game. Nice. 11,750. Player, I couldn't have done a better job myself. But then, I wasn't playing by myself, was I? But seriously, player, and I don't say this to just everybody. You don't know Jack! Nice work, folks. Okay, let's get those commercials rolling, and what's happening? Are we going to go again, or what? Silly on the hose of Spinoza. Find Thoreau in the forest land scavenger hunt. And kids, try the new burdens as petting zoo. One ride, and you'll be coming back for Thomas More. God may be dead, but heaven is a place called Philosopher World. In order for some rides to work, you must consciously think that you are right.